cut my fingernails. Uh oh, do you need me to open it for you? Can you open it? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, my wife. Hey everybody, it's your old pal Mike. And I'm Carissa. My wife and I are here on a Sunday afternoon uh, excited to watch the working class music review of My Sparkle Jaguar. Um, it was the most fun meeting Jason and Tia. They are some of my favorite people in the world. Shout out to Jason, Tia, Nelson, and Xander, the team that makes working class such a damn good channel. Seriously, the best channel on YouTube. Uh, I cannot recommend them enough. Uh, but my good friends used my Jaguar in a bunch of videos and decided to review it, which is crazy. I never expected one of my own guitars to get a review, but here we are. We're going to watch it, react to it, and uh, hopefully get some more viewers over to the Working Class channel. So uh, let's get into it. This is the true story. The this Guitar the House intro. Of guitar YouTubers. This is the true story of guitar YouTubers. <laughs> Steve is so <laughs> wild. Guitar house. <laughs> RJ guitar. and Haley. It's Star Guitar House. Guitar House. Guitar House. Guitar House. <laughs> Cut off screams are one of my favorite things in the world. And Steve. <laughs> guitar House. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking funny every time. From Sweetwater. Diadario. Chase Bliss. And Big Ear Pedals. Thank you to all our sponsors for Guitar House. Hey everybody, this is Jason and welcome to Working Class Music. I'm one of your hosts today. It looks so good on camera. Guitar House. So this is gonna be a fun episode. I thought on this episode it would be fun to check out one of my best friends, Mike Adam. Best friend! You said best friend? Best friend! Like, live for the first time in forever. And he brought it with him. I played it. <laughs> and just a little bit of information for you. I am typically not the biggest Jaguar fan. I was, but I, I think I find myself fighting with the scale length from time to time. Uh, Jason told me that in person that he felt like the Jaguar scale length was problematic, was really tough to play. And he's not alone in that. A lot of people find the 24 inch scale uh, kind of unworkable, especially uh, I hear that from very tall people. People over six feet um, frequently tell me that the jag neck is way too small for them to work with. But I find something that helps is jacking up the string gauge. Uh, so for me, I'm not a big guy, but uh, I usually use a string gauge higher on jags than I do on jazz masters. So jazz master, I use 11 to 50. Uh, jags, I go 12 to 54. Um, so, you know, if you're having trouble with the Jag scale length, try bumping up the strings uh, a little bit and see if that helps. I don't know. You have anything to add? <laughs> nope. Carissa, what's your opinion of the 24-inch scale length? <laughs> Do you like it? It's great. Will this change my mind? I don't know. But a little info about this. It will. This. Friday night. I love the wall behind us at Guitar House. That was painted by Ryan's wife and... I wish I could have made some content there because it's it's just so colorful, it's bright, it's beautifully lit. Uh, I kind of want all of my walls to look like that, but you know, apartments don't really enjoy when you hand paint things, so <laughs> kind of stuck. It makes all the thumbnails really pop. I, yeah, makes them pop. I love that. Mary, the jazz master offset guru, Mike Adams himself, <laughs> in the flesh. <laughs> and I it's Jason's best friend. <laughs> it was it was a total romance. We loved <laughs> hanging out together. Uh, we both admitted how like nervous we were to meet each other because we were both big fans. And what if they aren't as nice in person? <laughs> <laughs> you were so giddy, like I was so giddy. Yeah, yeah, so excited to meet. And I think. At least from your side, it lived up to your expectations. <laughs> it totally lived yeah. up to my expectations. Yeah. Jason and Tia both are just wonderful people to talk to and hang out with. They have such a wonderful perspective on life. Um, and I learned a lot from them. I learned a lot from them while I got to hang out with them. Uh, and also, uh, Tia had hot sauce. And it was a big mistake. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I realized while reviewing this, I did not know the specs on this. And I left that out because I was just like, who better than Mike to explain this? The guy who built it. Yes. So, let's start with the neck. Let's start with the neck. So, we've got 
1963 Be With Neck. This is the original neck to my charcoal frost jag that has the 12 yes. hips in it. For some reason, I hated this neck on that guitar. Took it off. I popped on a 65A width neck and put this in the corner for a long time. So Okay, so that is true. When I first got this guitar, it looked a lot different than it does now. Uh, it was thickly finished in this like vaguely Olympic white sort of yellow uh, finish that had the texture of a Pringle chip. It was disgusting. Uh, and that neck lived on this guitar. Uh, and for some reason, yeah, I just didn't like them together. It felt sort of plasticky, uh, the sound wasn't very good. Um, yeah, and I just, I just needed something different. So this uh, 65A width neck came into my possession as payment for some repairs that I did. Uh, and I bolted it on to see and immediately the guitar came to life. So I finally found a project for it. So it's got a 63A neck that's a veneer board, so it's curved. It still has the clay dots, which aren't clay, they're tiled, but we... Eh. That's also true. Um, we always call them clay dots, those brown dots that exist on old Fender necks, but they're actually not made of clay. I think we just call them that because they're the color of clay, but they're not clay, they're actually like ceiling tile, basically. <laughs> That's what Fender was using uh, as dot inlays, and the tile gets darker and darker and darker as it's, it's exposed to air and moisture, that kind of thing. Um, so it's the color of clay, but it's not really clay. And then I did a full refret on that with Stumac uh, 148 frets. It's a seven and a quarter radius fret. Carissa has heard me say this a lot, but Stumac 148 are my favorite fret wire. I love it. I use it on everything. Got it on this, got it on Pancake, got it on that thing. Uh, I think I asked for it on my Creston. I think everything I own has 148 and I just, I just love the shape. It's vaguely vintage size, but it's a, a little bit taller, a little bit wider. Just feels great. Not that you would get that from me doing that on camera. That doesn't make any sense. What a stupid idea. <laughs> Do you have anything to add? <laughs> nope. Raise that fret fretboard until you get to about here where it flattens. Did you get a, uh, Just a little bit. Not quite to nine and a half. Just a little bit to make bending just a little bit sweeter. All of my favorite guitars have a seven and a quarter radius, uh, which I love. Uh, but this guitar, that Jag, when I do refrets, I often uh, radius the fretboard at seven and a quarter, and then I flatten it just a little bit with my nine and a half inch block, just in the middle here. Uh, and I make sort of a compound radius out of the end of the fretboard. And I do the same with the tops of the frets so that I can bend a lot easier and not worry about fretting out. So uh, seven and a quarter, you can totally bend on if you set the guitar up right. Uh, but me, I often elect to just flatten it out a little bit, make life a little bit easier. Great. Great. <laughs> I'm sorry I made you be in this. <laughs> <laughs> just here for the smiles, okay. The smiles and the friendship. <laughs> me, with my tiny baby hands, I like a skinny neck. This is about 0 0.82, 0 0.83. And once I found the depth that I like to adjust the profile, I put some stick it sandpaper in my hand and I just went like this until I was happy with the profile. I literally shaped it to my hand because it's my neck. I will do what I want. I did that to this one too, where I uh, just adjusted the contour, the profile of the neck with my hand because I wanted it to fit me like a glove and guess what? It does. But yeah, it's a pretty comfortable neck. I did shave it down. It was one of those very big 63 necks and for some reason 63 is just a very big year. But yeah, shaped to my hand. What do you think? How do you like that? You like that? Does that feel good? Feels nice. Hell yeah, it feels real good. So these are a set by the fantastic company EP Custom. Lovely small operation. This is their 62 Jaguar set, which they now wind with Formvar wire. The bridge pickup is overwound. It's like 7.3K, which is pretty hot for a Jag. Jags are usually like 6.5. The neck pickup is 6.3. Perfect balance, perfect match. Bridge is nice and throaty. The neck has depth and mid-range, and I'm really happy with that set. Shout out to EP Custom. I love what you do. Uh, and this this set is fantastic. It's got low mids, it's got thump and girth, and it's snarly, like, oh, I really enjoy these pickups. Can't say enough nice things, and they're a super nice uh, company, so uh, shout out. Go give them money. Box. 
One Meg! One Emerson Meg. CTS One Meg Pots, no treble bleed. I did completely rewire it. Actually, this switch pod, this entire switch pod is from a 62 Jag that someone needed parts for. So, this is vintage. I forgot about that. It doesn't have to be vintage. I just had them and I used them. The Rhythm Circuit is also out of that same 62 Jaguar that had huge issues. So the Rhythm Circuit, I did replace the switch because the switch was faulty on that. But the wiring is is your normal Jag. Yeah, so I, uh, I always get questions about what pots people should use in their Jazzmaster or Jaguar and I always stick with one Meg. Uh, every time I've tried to step down to 500 or 250, like it sounds fine but it loses something for me. And I understand that that makes them very bright. That's part of the sound for me. Uh, I use very dark amps, so I'm hitting a very dark, loud amp with a bright guitar, and uh, I don't know, that's what works for me. May not work for you. If you use like a silver panel Fender or something else that is extraordinarily bright, you, you might enjoy stepping down your pots from one meg, but me, I'll stick with stock. Uh, Mastery is the bridge option that works best for me. There are so many great options. We've got stage trim, Halon, we've got the American Pro 2 bridge. There are so many great bridges out there. Obviously find the one that works best for you. For me, Mastery works best for me. Even though I use heavy strings, it's the one that has the sound I like. People always uh, try to pull uh, gotcha on me for, uh, over the course of my career, touting the virtues of the stock Jaguar and Jazzmaster bridge, but ah, oh, but you use mastery. Oh, you're a hypocrite. Yeah, I'm a hypocrite. Everybody is. <laughs> uh, the, the stock bridge is fantastic, and I love it. The sound, the feel, the way it works, especially when it's set up correctly. That's the catch. Um, but it's mastery just works for me. It's what I've gotten used to. Um, and it's not so much the strings staying in place. That's a great benefit, but that's not why I keep coming back. I actually really like what the mastery does to the sound of my guitar. Every time I install one, it makes the guitar a little bit louder and gives it just a little bit more sustain, which is not the most important thing in the world, but for the way I play, it helps, especially with those dark amps. So yeah, I just really enjoy the mastery and I, um, you know, I, I would like at some point to have a couple guitars with the original bridge installed. Hell, sometimes I'll swap it back on and pancake when I just want to play around with it, and I love it. Uh, uh, curious note, I have not swapped the bridge on the American Pro 2. Uh, I've, I'm actually really enjoying it the way that it is. So, yeah, the stock bridge is great. Uh, I will uh, keep saying that until the day that I pass on from this mortal coil. Uh, but me, yeah, I just, I just really love Mastery. Woody is a good friend. Uh, Woody's been wonderful to me over the years. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know. But, as I say in the video... Find the one that works best for you. What works for me may not be the right thing for you, and that's great. So, yeah, there are a ton of options out there, and you should absolutely try as many as you want. Why the finish? <laughs> I love sparkle. Ever since I was a kid, I've been, like, keenly attracted to sparkly things. So I've always wanted a sparkle guitar. I never had one. So I went to Guitar Mill. Guitar Mill is a place that does bodies and finishes, and they and necks too, but they're finishes are incredible, and they did this finish, and it is one of the deepest sparkle finishes I've ever encountered. And it is in a color called Coke Bottle Sparkle, uh, which is something I have desperately wanted ever since discovering one of my favorite surf players, whose name is Dave Ronsky. He's in a band called Slacktone. He has this stable of incredible sparkle finished Jaguars. I met Dave Ronsky once at the Fender plant. He was working in the, I believe the setup department, and it was a dream come true. And he's good friends with my good friend, Jake, um, uh, who's in a band called The Verb, kick-ass surf band. Dave is a legend. He's an incredible surf guitarist. His tone is so good. It's thick, it's a little bit gainy, it's got a nice echo on it. Um, and what he does with Jaguar is uh, tantamount to magic, in my opinion. Also, Dave posts on YouTube, so find Dave Ronsky in Slacktone and give him all the love that he deserves. Uh, but also check out his other cool jags. He's got a, a pink, a champagne. He's He's got an amazing guitar collection. Something's occurring to me right now that my ring actually... Uh, oh my... Hey! Oh, your with... Peridot ring is the perfect match. Well, isn't that nice? We should get a, a lovely picture when we, we should do another engagement shoot. 
We should just retake all of our wedding photos because we both look much cooler now than we did then. I didn't have a beard back then. What a loser. Why did you marry me? Don't answer that. Thank you for uh, letting me play this. Review I can't time. wait to see the review. I, I hope that it does well. So, yeah. Let's uh, give it a couple noodles and... Is he playing through the 5150? Bridge pickup. Oh, it's so thick. Both pickups. There's a nice thud with that 5150 that I had a lot of trouble getting. I couldn't get enough bass out of that thing. Damn, Jason, I love how you play. Shout out to Haley from Rocket Music, uh, the strap, the hoverboard strap. Thank you. <laughs> I guess we have to ask the angel question. Does Mike's guitar dad rock? Let's find out. <laughs> it definitely does. <laughs> Jason, you sound so good on this thing. I should've just given it to you. You should've just taken it home with you. <laughs> really good sound, Xander. Yeah. Really good edit, Nelson. This rules. So yeah. Let's talk about first impressions. <laughs> so admittedly, I played this guitar yesterday and I turned around and I told Mike, this is by far the best Jaguar that I've ever played. Like Fender, I don't think you're watching this. I don't even think you know we exist. <laughs> but if you somehow manage to see this video, Mike Adams deserves his own signature model. And I would say this would be one that you should copy for him. Although that Darth Vader model looks really interesting too. Fender doesn't get to copy my Creston. They do not get to copy that. <laughs> Go to Creston if you want to kick ass Vader. Uh, that, the, that was, that thrilled me. That was like the nicest thing anyone's ever said. Uh, Jason, thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy that you like it. And um, I, I am immeasurably proud of how this came out. Like this, this, I think this is the best Jaguar I've ever played. And I've played thousands. Yeah, I'm, I'm so thrilled with this thing. And it means the world that Jason loves it. Everybody at Guitar House kept using this in their videos and enjoying it. By the time he got to it, I think the strings were already dead, but it, it sounds <laughs> great. Oh, sounds great. That makes me so happy. Yeah. The neck is super comfortable. That 60s neck is amazing. I like that it's sanded down and it's worn in. It feels like it's been played with some love. I love the pickups. I'm very much becoming a bridge kind of guy. Yeah! <laughs> Overall, this is one of the best guitars I've ever played in my life. I was a bit nervous, but <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Maybe you should turn this into like a signature model. Maybe, hopefully, my school enough for that. So, <laughs> fucking pay me though. Yeah. You don't get this for free. Actually, you know what? You you employed Dave Ronsky for a little while. This is basically a complete ripoff of his Jag. Just just give us a Ronsky model. But also, Fender, you want to talk? Want to bury the hatchet? Hit your boy up. I want to wrap up uh, our video by saying... Uh, also, thank you to all of these sponsors. Sweetwater was great. It was so good to work with them, finally. They were all really nice and really... Uh, seem to understand where I'm coming from, since I don't do reviews and pedals and things, usually. Uh, Diderio sponsored, it was cool to have that. Uh, I really like the XTs. Uh, we'll be doing a giveaway soon, so keep your eyes open for that. Chase Bliss, thank you for sending me a habit. I, it blows my mind. It blows my mind that I got one of those, and I've been having so much fun with it. Um, which is wild, because their pedals are often a little, a little heady for me, and I feel... Um, and not smart enough. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's a compliment. They make me want to be smarter. Big Ear, uh, Grant and Karen, lovely people uh, who let me sleep on their floor once. I couldn't say enough nice things about them, so thank you, Big Ear. Perfecto. He makes the perfect coffee. Oh yeah, Perfecto. Uh, nicest person in the world. Yeah, you said you loved his coffee. Yeah, he made he made coffee every morning for all of us. 
Um, and especially me, even when I didn't ask for it, like he just saw how disheveled I was from not sleeping very well. And he went, you need coffee and made me, uh, I don't know what the terms are, but it was like amazing, uh, Dark, coffee dark, dark roast, roast a I super dark said. roast yeah. from philippines boy it, it was real good i don't know the coffee <laughs> language <laughs> but chris is yes. chris is a coffee professional chris yes. knows this stuff so perfecto we need to talk apparently you need to talk i want to know i want to know i want to try it yeah no for a guy who had two hundred and fifty thousand subscribers um he was so eager to work with each of us like pulled us into the room with him um I was just standing around, and he went, you, me, we're jamming. Uh, and we went in and jammed for like half an hour together. And, I mean, it was hard to keep up because that guy can shred. But, yeah, it was just wonderful to learn from him. He was so open with his advice for having a gear channel, but also musically. I got to ask him some questions that I've been wanting to ask for ages because the theory side of music kind of mystifies me and, and is really tough for me to learn. Uh, and he was more than willing to, to show me some things, show me a couple licks, and then tell me how to approach uh, certain modes and scales in a way that made more sense to me than it ever had. So, Perfecto, uh, you're wonderful. Thank you so much. You're going to have to clone this for me some kind of way, because I love this. Uh, Jason, I will build you anything you want, anytime. Hit me up. We're going to get a project going. You and Tia both. Having the chance to meet you both work with you both, and then having you review my prized guitar. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. I'm so happy. Uh, working class, thank you so much. Uh, what an honor, what a privilege. Uh, I love you to death. Leave me what your favorite offset is. I wanna know that. What, what, what is your favorite offset? Leave that in the comments. I'm gonna answer that question. Uh, I've played so many amazing offsets. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, I got to hang out with Nels Klein in New York City and play a couple of his and they were all divine, especially that 58 with the gold guard that was broken. Hell of a guitar. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel again and again. Liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. Algorithm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout out to my supporters on Patreon. I love you all. Uh, you give me Thank life. You. We hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other. Hope you're having fun with guitars. And we'll see you in the, in next, the next video. video. <laughs> Hey, yeah. 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 That was fun. That was yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>